see that scene. Okay, when we analyze the scene, what we see here, see the king sitting casually upon the throne. Also, you don't find any king or any queen today sitting like this. He had all the self, some people say that he was sitting like this because he had a problem with his back. Fine. I think that he was sitting like this, very casual, because he w w wouldn't expect anybody to criticize what he's doing. He's the owner of the universe. Who on earth would criticize what he's doing? The way he's sitting, the way he's talking, the way he's walking, the way whatever. So nobody is to criticize the son of the gods and his beloved wife. Okay, what do they do? She's standing in front of him, if we size again, more or less, and she's touching very gently his shoulder, very gently. And with the other hand, she's holding a glass. Some people say maybe it has a drink, and she's about to serve him a drink. Fine. Some said that maybe that glass contains like perfumed oil for purifying or for massaging his shoulder or massaging his back he, if he had a problem with his back or whatever. Fine. When we go down, we look at their feet. Most people not, don't notice this. Uh, look at the feet. It looks to me, I don't know if you agree or not, it looks to me that they were sharing one pair of shoes or one pair of sandals. Oh, wait a minute. They didn't have enough money to buy two? Ah, here, in my opinion, the one who did this beautiful decoration of the throne meant to send a message that the king and the queen, because of the love between the two of them, they were sharing everything, even something people don't usually share, which is the shoes or uh, the sandals. Mm. Uh, extending to the uh, to the common, although that's young down. Yes. It's okay to show the imperfections of the, the royalty's bodies. Uh, that's right. I was used to see that no matter how the king or the queen originally looked, they had to look like they're very well built. Excellent. Strong. Excellent. Uh, but for the Amarna face, like look at the imperfection of Tutankhamun, and doctors think maybe he had Follett syndrome. Excellent. Because his lower half is really. Again, uh, what you said is brilliant. And uh, when we study the art, the Amarna art, we were confused actually. Was it because the king had problem, had a problem with his body, with his figure, and so on? He was he was ill somehow, and uh, this is the way they were wanted to depict him in this form, uh, or was it like a kind of a revolution in art? If you ask me about my own opinion, I think it was a revolution in art. Before Akhenaten, before Akhenaten, look at his father here. I, I don't have a picture of the statue of his father, by the way. His father is known as one of the most handsome pharaohs. I'm on Hotel the Third. He got a beautiful statue, either in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo or Luxor Museum, or tell beautiful statues. But when we look at uh, his son, he looks very different. Big belly, long face, very thick lips. Uh, it, uh, it's not the normal form of showing the king or the queen. Realistic. And I, I used to say too realistic. Kind of, kind of, too realistic. I mean, yeah, today. realistic. Excellent. I used to say that before Akhenaten, they 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 were hiding facts. No matter the king was uh, uh, handsome or ugly. Uh, was uh, 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 ill or uh, fit, uh, they were always showing them in the best form. Young, strong, someone like Ramesses II. Lived until he was 90 something. When you look at his statues, you never find the statue of the guy at the age of uh, 40 even. He always looks like he's over here. 27, 28, 30, 32. He's always young, strong, handsome, good looking, muscles, and, yeah, well built. Yeah. All the queens, all the ladies, 
perfect. Funny thing about, for example, Queen Hatshepsut. When you look at the pictures of Hatshepsut, uh, when, you, when you look at the drawings and the carvings in her own temple of Dir al Bahari in Luxor, temple of Hatshepsut, West Bank of Luxor, she looked beautiful. I think in 2006, they were uh, examining some of the unknown mummies. It's been proved that one of them belongs to the famous Queen Hatshepsut, died at the age of 53, 54, something, is quite young, and she suffered from lots of illness. Using the DNA test and so on, proved that this is the mummy of Queen Hatshepsut, and she was ugly. Oh, really? Yeah. She was not like what we thought from the drawings and the paintings and the carvings on her own temple. So they didn't care about the real figure of the king or the queen. They focused on the ideal form. Why? Because they believe that when the soul comes back to, the, to recognize the body, will bring the body to that ideal form. So if he was old, if he was like 80, died at the age of 80, he's not coming back to heaven at the age of 80. He will not, won't, not be, won't be able to enjoy his, his, his heaven or his afterlife. So they want him to come back young. They want him to come back handsome. They want to, him to come back strong and so on. But Akhenaten, because he was changing everything, I said it was a revolution in religion and art, he was trying to introduce the idea that God doesn't care about the way you look like. God doesn't care about if you're old or young. Does, doesn't care about if you're ugly or handsome. Hmm? He will look into your heart. If you are good, then you will have a better life in the after. If you're bad, if your heart is heavy, then you will be thrown in hell. But no you matter the most beautiful woman on the earth. Who? Uh, I can have them? Yeah. Lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, I think this is one of the things he introduced to the Egyptian society thousands of years ago. And as he said, you can sense the similarity in the art when we talk about the carving of the throne, for example. Because they started, of course, working on the artifacts of the king or the collection of the king or the furniture of the king from day one of the king upon the throne because they didn't know when he's going to die could die in, in a week time, or in a year time, or in 50 years time, nobody knows. So they had to work, a team working, building a tomb, working on the furnishes, when the king is dead, at least they are ready or half ready or whatever. This is why many of the kings died while the tombs were under construction, like half finished. Hmm? So I think they were still influenced. And the best example, if you'd like to study the art, of Amarna, don't go to see the tombs of Amarna, but you can easily visit the West Bank of Luxor. I recommend highly to visit the tomb of Ramosa. <coughs> Ramosa worked for Amenhotep the Third, and then after he died, he served his son Akhenaten. So when you go to the tomb of Ramosa, which is actually opposite to the mortuary temple of Ramesses II, the so-called Ramesseum, is one of the best tombs. You will be shocked because you get into the tomb. Left hand side is a kind of art, which is the art by the time of Amenhotep III. In front of you, the rear wall is totally decorated by the time of Akhenaten when he was upon the throne, so you can see the Amarna art. So the original art of Amenhotep III is shown in a section of a tomb. The other section is the Amarna art. And you can easily compare one side and the other side is totally different, as if they are two different tombs or two different persons. Hmm? Hisham, yes. why do you think, in your opinion, uh, Akhenaten is depicted in that style? I know it's a new version uh, of art, but why? why? That, that's a very good question. It represents uh, male and female. So in your opinion, this, because there are so many theories. Yes, yes, I agree with you. There are many theories about it. And one of them is that 
he was maybe suffering from kind of illness and that was quite expected because they were getting married to their sisters or cousins or members of the family so the carriage generally falls over the years definitely that that makes sense uh, and because he was introducing this new style of art he wouldn't hide the facts he didn't care about showing himself in in the ideal form this is one of the things the other thing is maybe he was as you said representing male and female in one body which is quite also unusual and again back to the main thing which is a new revolution in art that's why i call this guy a genius pharaoh because of what he's done over the years, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, and of course uh, you know better. I'm only Please. speaking from my perspective as a, as a physician and, or a doctor. So I understand that there are some congenital or genetic problems in which yes. men do have this uh, abnormal form uh, structure. Kind of deformed body. Yes, yes, in which their lower half is much bigger, even exaggerated than, than a normal female figure. Uh, given that, along with the general about the art that I've happened to notice with, uh, with thick lips and uh, a longer head or skull, skull, which goes yes. like kind of elongated on the back. So it could be like it's something genetic in the family <coughs> features along with a problem. Now, of course, you know. Yes, I agree with you 100%. I'm only adding my, my input as a doctor, that's all. Uh, what, what's impressive is that someone with the, with the fame power of the, and, and power of, of Akhenaten doesn't care to show that imperfection. And that is why I, I can truly believe that Nefertiti is really pretty, because they were so realistic in their arts, unlike the example you yeah, mentioned about I agree history. with you. And you can still see also some of the unfinished uh, busts of uh, Nefertiti. Uh, one of them is here in the Egyptian Museum, another one in the Metropolitan Museum. It's a beautiful one as well. And if, if anybody interested to see this collection, can, can send me an email, I can send you these pictures taken by myself in the Met uh, in New York. Another beautiful uh, one beside the one we have here in, in the Egyptian Museum in Los. Apart from the stolen one in, in Germany. But <laughs> I'm talking about the unfinished ones. Um, this is like some more of the scenes from Tutankhamen, hunting scenes and so on, him and his wife. And here we can see these statues are from the Temple of Luxor, hmm? showing Tutankhamen and his wife in the form of Amun-Ra and his wife. Because they are coming as forms of gods, so they got <coughs> equal sides. Look at the shoulders here. Hmm? By the way, this, these statues were uh, reused, I would like to say being stolen, because I, I'm totally against this uh, theory. And that someone like Ramesh II has stolen some of the collections of the previous kings by changing the name. Uh, if you look at here, this section in particular, if you ever go to Luxor one day, check these statues by the beginning of the colonnade uh, to the interior section. Uh, you'll find the cartouche of Ramesh II carved. And even the carving of the cartouche is very different from the beautiful carving of the statue itself. When I was in, in university and our professors, my great respect to them, all they they told us that Ramesh the second was stealing from the other fields by changing the name. And I totally disagree. I think that the guy maybe didn't know about this. Don't expect someone like Ramesh the second would know about what the workers do. Yeah? Uh, they, they were assigned to do some work like making new statues for, for the king, and uh, instead of making a new statue from scratch, they can steal from the collection they have and what they do, just change the name and so on. Uh, even done with no perfection. But anyway, uh, this is the statue of uh, uh, Tutankhamen and his wife, again, equal in size, because they were representing the god and the goddess. So there is no difference between male and female. Uh, some more pictures from Gordy life. Uh, he like, for example, farming, while they were farming together. And it's amazing to see, I mean, if you go to the countryside, maybe not today, because today life in the countryside is different. But let's say 40, 50 years ago, when most Egyptians were farmers, you find the families working together. 
uh, uh, the, the, the farmer and his wife, they're working in the harvest together, they're working uh, 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 in looking after the plants and crops and so on, always cooperating. So this is, I mean, the, 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 the most common comment I used to get from uh, non-Egyptians uh, visiting Egypt during a cruise on the Nile, so uh, when they, they sit on the top deck, and look at the what they see from from the night cruise. They are oh, wow, this is quite amazing because we look at the scenes. They are very biblical scenes. They are very much like how Egypt was described in in the Bible. Nothing has been changed. It's I mean the same forms, the same kind of uh, tools they use. The farmers they look very much the same as we imagine them according to the stories from the Bible. So has been like this for thousands of years by the time of the ancient Egyptians. Uh, collection of pictures, again, nothing to say more about. This is from, again from the tomb of Ramosa, one of my favorite tombs in the whole of Egypt. You need to go, if you haven't been, believe me, you won't miss it. Uh, uh, it's in Luxor, uh, you, uh, uh, you won't regret it, I mean. Uh, it's in Luxor, the West Bank of Luxor. Uh, so if you ever have a chance to go to Luxor, it's easy to go to Luxor. It's not a, a difficult place to, to visit. Uh, and uh, while you're doing the visit to the Valley of the Kings, and the Valley of the Queens, and uh, whatever, the famous uh, sites, you need to stop by the tomb of Ramos. It takes like 15, 20 minutes, if you'd like to have a quick look at the tomb. And opposite the tomb, as I said, is the tomb of uh, um, uh, Ramesses II, the so-called Ramesseum. I think I have a picture of, of Ramesseum coming now. It's our lean farmers. Noodles. The elite of the society, of course, they had a better life. Uh, they had banquets, and they wanted to show their banquets in their tombs, yeah, to so have the same thing in the afterlife. Again, sitting together, same equal size, and uh, nothing different. Uh, this statue uh, from uh, Karnak and from Luxor, and I got them to show you. Now, the difference in the size between the king and the queen. This is what most people think about ancient Egypt. Ah, look at the king and look at the queen. You men never change. <coughs> Been like this since. Yeah? And this is quite obvious here. This is from the Temple of Luxor. The open court of Luxor and the statue of Nofetali behind his left leg. Fine. When I look at the statue here, before going further to explain this in details, uh, we, we, we go to an art museum, and if we all stand in front of one of the famous paintings, I might see the little house by the canal, while you see uh, uh, the, the, the moon in the sky, while someone would uh, look at uh, the goat, and like it very much. So everyone has his own perspective when we look at the same painting. So when I look at a statue like this, I would tell myself that Ramesses II was talking to his beloved wife, Nefertari, telling her that behind, I believe that behind every successful man is a great woman like yourself. And she is answering him back by touching him very gently as if she is pushing forward his left leg my husband, my darling, I'm supporting you. I'm standing by you. Yeah? So this is a kind of hidden conversation between the two of them. Why do I say so? Ramesses is the second was surrounded by many women. Got many wives, like five wives. But one of them was the royal wife. I will go through the titles being given by Ramesses the second to uh, uh, the beloved Queen of Atari later. Uh, Queen of Atari was his uh, 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 love and she was the mother of his children will succeed uh, 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 the father upon the throne later on. For example, in one of the marriages of Ramesses II, when he was fighting the Hittites and he claimed that he won the famous Battle of Kadesh. He mentioned this in all his temples. Ramesseum, Karnak, Luxor, 
I will send them everywhere. I own the Battle of Kardash. I destroyed the Hittites and so on. Fine. But we found some documents by the Hittites themselves claiming that they defeated the Egyptians. Wait a minute. Who's telling the truth? Who's telling lies? We found out that both of them were exaggerated. Because it was not just one round. It was more than one round. When we went into more into the details of what was written by Ramesses the second himself, he said that my army was divided into four divisions, so I was leading the front division, and I was like two days ahead of the rest of the army, and we arrested two spies, and they gave us wrong information, so we were trapped, and I almost got killed until I shouted the name of, am I God, am I my father? And I managed to run away and escape from the battlefield, returned back to the rest of his army, organized himself again, and then another round against the Hittites. Did you win the second round? No. He couldn't finish it. He couldn't win that. What did you do, Mr. Ramesses? I realized after many years, or many months, whatever, fighting the Hittites, that I cannot destroy them. And they realized the same thing. Thousands of you are getting killed every day. So we need to become more wise. Wiser. What should we do? We need to sit together. We need to talk. We need to have peace process. Really? I thought for many years that the first peace process in the Middle East was between Egypt and Israel. But I realized, studying history, that the first known peace treaty in the Middle East was by Ramesses II and the Hittites king. They signed the treaty, borders, respecting each other's, and to tie that treaty, they needed to have marriage. a marriage. This is why Europeans' royal families were getting married. Yeah. So they did this about 3,300 years ago. So what about this marriage? Ah, the Hittite king said, ah, I'll send you my daughter, the princess, to Egypt to get married to you. You're an old man, so and so, she's young, she's beautiful, whatever, but you know, but you're the king of Egypt. So I'll send her to Egypt, she'll get married to you, but you will need to make her the queen of Egypt. Fine. When we think about it, if Ramesses the second won the battle of Kaddish, he would accept. Why would he accept the princess, the daughter of the defeated king? to be his wife and the queen of Egypt. He can easily take her as one of his slaves. Yeah? Am I right? If it's the other way around, if the Hittites won the battle, why on earth would they send their daughter to get married to this old guy in Egypt and live away from the family? Why? Why do they need so? Ah, they needed that because no winner was in the Battle of Kaush. And we need to try this with the chain of marriage. When the father sent his daughter, he sent lots of gifts. Hmm? The most common, uh, the most uh, famous gift was 365 beautiful ladies. Gift for the king. How many? 365. One, each day. One for each day. Excellent. These guys studied the psychology of Ramesses II. Yeah? Studied the psychology of Ramesses II. Knew that the Egyptians, they love people from that area. Yeah? Syrians and from, from let's say, the area of Asia Minor. Hmm? Okay. Send them 365. One for each day. To keep him busy. To keep him busy from doing what? Yeah. From war. They knew that Prime Saka will try all this women before thinking about uh, to keep him busy from war <coughs> and to keep him busy from something even more important than war. Spreading his uh, fire? No, from spending time with the new wife. Maybe those 365 <coughs> girls were more beautiful than the princess. 
So he wouldn't have time to think about spending a night even with the new princess because that was not a marriage based on love, it was based on politics. It was a political marriage. Fine. Back to Nofetari. So I, I, I told you this story just to explain the idea that Ramos II didn't have a problem with women. I mean, he was surrounded by hundreds, hundreds of them. If you want any one of them, okay, fine. But in his heart, he had love to only one of them, Nofetari. Okay.